Hello and welcome to the first episode of the PT series. This episode is dedicated to art and culture. Whatever news has been there with respect to art and culture, which is important from the perspective of preliminary examination, those current affairs has been accumulated in the form of episodes. So let's begin with the first topic for today. We have to discuss about Ramappa Temple, which is India's 39th World Heritage Site. Let's know about Ramappa Temple. Ramappa Temple is actually a 13th century engineering marvel in UNESCO list. Why? Because it uses a very important technique that is the sandbox technique, right? That we will discuss about sandbox technique. And it will interest you to know that it is also known by the name of Rudreswara Temple. So if it's asked in the examination, don't get confused, okay? Rudreswara Temple, it is present in Telangana, okay? And it is the only temple in India that has been named after its sculptor. That is, sculptor is Ramappa, okay? So, decision to make it a part of the World Heritage List was taken at the 44th session of the World Heritage Committee of UNESCO. And India has got its 39th World Heritage Site. Very interestingly, it was the only site to be nominated, to be taken into the list in the year 2019. Although the name of the Ramappa Temple in its tentative list, UNESCO World Heritage Site's tentative list, it was present since the year 2014. Okay, moving on. Now, let's know about Ramappa Temple. Temple was constructed in 1213 AD and it was during the reign of, reign of Kakatiya Empire. Who was reigning at that time? Ganpati? Dev, okay? And Ganpati Dev was the ruler, the Kakatiya ruler, ruler and Racharela Rudra, he constructed the entire plan of getting Ramappa Temple into place. Then the presiding deity, who is presiding, who is being worshipped at the Ramappa temple, is its Ramalingeswara Swami. Okay? And it is also known as the Ramappa temple after the sculptor. As I told you, only temple to be named. So, and the work in the temple was for 40 years. Who executed the work for the Ramappa temple for 40 years, a long period of time. And the temple complexes of Kakatiyas, they have distinct style technology and decoration. Temple stands on a six feet high star-shaped platform. Okay, it's a star-shaped platform like this. So, remember all these small things which you might think it's not significant, but it's very significant. Then temple rests on a foundation that uses sandbox technology. What is sandbox technology? First of all, it was built, uh, the sandbox technique was used in order to resist earthquakes. How do they do it? They put a three at least a three meter deep pit, okay? The foundation pit, okay? That we call leave in Hindi. So foundation pit is three meter deep and it is filled with sand, okay? Then it gives a stronger structure to it. After that, a mixture of sand with mixture of jaggery, jaggery and granite plus one more material, any important material which is found there, is put together to make this entire foundational pit stronger and then the entire structure is constructed upon it. Then the, temp the floor is made from granite and the pillars are of basalt, important, could be asked. Floor is from granite, pillars are from basalt. It's not the uh, other way around, remember that. Then the lower part of the temple is red sandstone. Again, important thing, while the white gopuram or the gateway is built with light bricks, okay? So, importantly, we have to remember all of this. Then the walls, pillars and ceilings are adorned with intricate carvings. This is with respect to every temple. And for this temple itself, it was said by a European merchant because they were so in awe of this temple. They said that this is the brightest star in the galaxy of medieval temples of the Deccan. So, every fact has been covered. Let's move forward to the next part. That is the Jagannath Temple of Puri. So, why is it in the news? Because the Archaeological Survey of India has asked the Orisha government to tweak down its Sri Mandara Parikrama project. This is a project that is an 800 crore rupees project. 800 crore. And 
it was taken in the year 2021. Why? It wants to build a 75 meter a circumambulatory path around the outer walls of the Jagannath Puri temple so that the devotees get an unobstructed view of the temple and if they have to be provided with amenities, it can be done in the path itself. And because this is such a huge project, it needs to be tweaked down according to the center. And this is the massive beautification project around Jagannath Temple. Remember that, okay? Then Jagannath Temple was called the White Pagoda. And it is one of the Chardham pilgrimage apart from Puri, Jagannath. We have Rameswaram, we have Badrinath and of course Dwarka. So these are the Chardham. Then one of the most revered site this is, it is dedicated to Vaishnava sect and it was the main shrine. Who built the main shrine? It was done by Anantvarman of the Chodaganga dynasty and King Ananga Bhim Dev completed the temple in which year? 1230 AD. And the temple is dedicated to Jagannath. Jagannath or the Lord of the Universe. It can be either a form of Vishnu or Krishna. Okay. And the temple is also called Yamanaka Tiritha. Okay, it is said that the power of death is reduced or it is nullified in Puri because of the temple. Then there are four gates, remember them, Eastern Singhudwar, Southern then Ashwadadwar, that is Ashwa means horse. Then we have Western Vyagradwar and Northern is Hastidwar. So before uh, we move forward, you have to take a screenshot of this because you have to remember these are the important facts that we have to take care of. Moving on, uh, Jagannath, Balbhadra and Subhadra are the trio of deities who are worshipped in this temple and inner sanctum of the temple or the Garbhagriha we call uh, it contains the statues of the three gods on the bejeweled platform and this bejeweled platform is known as Ratnabedi. okay let's move forward and talk about the temple architecture the temple architecture is a marvelous structure it is built in Kalinga architecture its height is 65 meters so, Kalinga architecture is prominently found in Kalinga. It was built through the periods of the Kalinga dynasty. And if we see Odisha, isn't it? I mean, the Kalinga is, Kalinga is present in Odisha. In West Bengal also, this was a prominent style. Also, Northern Andhra Pradesh. Okay, remember all this. Northern Andhra Pradesh. So, it has three types of Kalinga architecture has three subtypes. We have Rekha Dyun, we have Pirha Dyun, Dyun, and we have Hakara Dyun. Okay? So, generally, the Rekha and Pirha Dyun are dedicated to Vaishnavite sect or Vishnu or Shiva, Shaivite sect. And Hakara is basically dedicated to Chamunda or Durga. So, remember this basic difference. Then, the main temple is constructed in such a way that the shadow of the temple doesn't fall on the ground at any time of the day. Very important preliminary fact, this could be asked. Then, a classic example of the Panchratha style, this is of Odishi temple architecture. Okay, Panchratha means five chariots, right? Then, the temple has two very big concentric stones. These are known as Meghnath Prachira, that is the outer wall, and Kurma Prachira, that is the inner enclosure. Not very important, but something to be uh, going through. Then we have Bamiya, Buddha, and Taliban issue. Bamiya, Buddha, and Taliban. We all know that Taliban is against Buddhism. It has, it also had destroyed Bamiya Buddha. Now Taliban is saying that we are going to preserve a very important Buddhist site, that is Mes Ainak. Interestingly. Mess Ainak is the largest copper deposit in Afghanistan. Okay. It is very close to Kabul. And Chinese government as well as the government of the illegitimate government Taliban, they have come together in order to preserve the site. Why? Because they want to explore the, car, the copper reserves there. So, Taliban talks of preserving Bamiya Buddhas in Mes Ainak and on February 27, 2001, the Taliban had announced their desire to destroy these statues. That is back in 2001 and the century old Buddha statues, these were destroyed using artillery, explosives and rockets. 
like this and now we have seen their illuminated or projected images that has of course not the original that is not the original but a projected image of buddha's bamiya buddha's over there moving on the post destruction scenario let's look at it in 2003 unesco included bamiya buddha's in the list of world heritage sites remember this now in 2021 the statue of salsal was recreated salsal is a part of one of the bamiya buddhas okay the buddha statues they were hewn from sandstone cliffs they date back to 5th century ad so this shows us that the importance or significance of buddhism was not only in india but also other important countries such as sri lanka such as afghanistan with two different mudras the statues were great examples of the confluence of not only gupta or also and also of sasanian and hellenistic art styles the among uh, also among these salsal and shamamma they rose to a height of 55 and 38 meters respectively what does salsal means it means the light that shines through the universe one of the bamiya buddha the second one was shamamma that is the mother queen mother okay when the buddhist kushan empire it expanded in the hindu kush mountains bamiya emerged as a hub of commercial and cultural exchange okay moving on to konark temple konark sun temple because a preliminary road map is being prepared to safely remove the sand from the interior interiors of the konark sun temple now this sand was filled over a century ago by whom by the british in the jagmohan that is the assembly hall where everybody used to assemble so in order to create stability sand was put there okay in order to carry out the sand removing process archaeological survey of india is being assisted by whom by central building research institute of roorkee important also this institute had done a scientific study on the temple temple structure stability between 2013 and 2018 and then gave its output now konark sun temple is in east odisha near the sacred city of puri where we have jagannath temple and it was built in the 13th century by king narsimh dev first also it represents strength and stability to the eastern or of the eastern ganga empire and the value system of the historic milieu also if we talk about the temple it is the culmination of kalingal temple architecture which we have already talked about and the temple designed is designed in the shape of colossal chariot it is dedicated to the sun god remember that konark sun temple we know that it was declared a unesco world heritage site in which year in 1984 important from the perspective of prelims okay moving on two rows of 12 wheels on each side of the temple is present and the seven horses are there and these are used to symbolize the seven days in a week temple is also known as black pagoda white pagoda is jagannath puri temple and Shri Surya Narayan Swami Temple is located in Arasavalli. It is one of the two temples of its kind. The other being the magnificent Konark Sun Temple in Odisha. Important. The last line. Moving on. Let's look at the previous year question. Which of the following is or are famous for sun temples? Arasavalli, Amarkantak, Omkareshwar. We have to choose the correct answer. Amarkantak, Omkareshwar. a shaivite sites and arasavalli is very important uh, is a very important place which has a temple dedicated to the sun god so the correct answer is one only and this is a upsc question from the year 2017 okay now the next topic is deva yatanam conference it's a conference on temple architecture remember that international conference on temple architecture in india it was re, it was organized at hampi and the name of the conference importantly deva yatanam okay remember this then it had deliberations or discussion on south indian temples art and architecture south india is blessed with temples architecture and art and the discussion was done on hoysala temples of belur and somnath pur hoysala temples of belur and somnath temples these are basically they belong to vesara style okay we have three types major types of temple nagra dravida and vesara so these represent vesara style 
Hoysalas of Karnatak they grew to prominence in South India after whom? Cholas and Pandyas. Remember? Also, many temples built from 11th to 14th century in the Deccan were under them. And Chinna Kesava Temple at Belur, Hoysala Temple at Ilbid, and Kesava Temple at Somnath Puram, these are the most prominent. Moving on. Now, Hoysala and Chalukyan influences are evident in these temples. These are the temples dedicated to whom? Lord Shiva and Vishnu. And Chinna Kesava Temple in Belur is an Ekakuta, that is the temple with one shrine, one shrine only, one important god. Remember this, take a screenshot or write it down. Hoysaleshwara temple and also Shanataleshwara temples, these are Divikuta, that means they have temples with two shrines. Again, take the screenshot. One shrine means one important god, two shrine means two important gods. So, a temple can have many important shrines, they can have five shrines, six shrines, depends on the number of gods. Okay, now let's talk about important Shiv temples and of course first we have to talk about the very famous Chola, Chola period Natraj. So Chola period Natraj is a bronze statue, okay. Shaivism is one of the main sects of Hinduism and this is the dancing figure of Shiv as Natraj and it epitomizes the zenith of which sculpture? Chola culture. Damru? The Damru is present in the upper right hand. You can see. Damru is present in the upper right, right hand. This can be asked in your prelims. Okay. And it signifies creation. Flame in the upper red, uh, left hand, it signifies destruction. So, it shows that the God is capable of creating and destructing at the same time. Lower right hand is posed in the Abhemudra, telling the devotees to stop fearing anything. And it is for blessing as well. The lower left hand is pointing to the raised leg that symbolizes salvation. And tell me in the comment segment, what is this called? This is actually ignorance. But what name does it have? Tell me in the comment segment. Moving on, if we talk about other famous Shiv temples, in the north and northeast, we have Om Temple of Aizawal, Mizoram. And Om Temple of Aizawal is one of the Hindus, Hindu temples in the state which is located in Thuampui village of Mizoram. This could be asked in prelims. And Kola Sip Shiva temple is located in Mizoram. Again important. Then we have Kirateshwar Mahadev temple of Sikkim. Kirateshwar Mahadev temple of Sikkim is situated at the banks of Rangit river. Rangit river in Lakeship town of Sikkim. Important for prelims. Rangit river and Kirateshwara Mahadev temple. Main attractions of the temple include which festivals? Festivals of Bala Chaturdashi and Mahashivratri. Again, important facts. Then we have Kedarnath Temple. Very important. We also have seen a movie on it. Kedarnath Temple is one of the 12 Jyotirlings. The 12 Jyotirlings were proposed by Adi Shankaracharya. Right? Adi Shankaracharya. Remember that. And this is on the Kedarnath Temple is on the banks of Mandakini river. Which river? Mandakini. On the banks of Mandakini river. And this temple is situated amidst the Garhwal Himalayan range. Again important from the perspective of prelims. Then we have Kashi Vishwanath temple of Varanasi where the Lord is known as, Lord Shiva is known as the Lord of the world, Vishwanath. And it is one of the most famous Shiv temples in India. And it was interestingly, uh, it was famous as the golden temple, which was dedicated to Lord Shiva. The gold which is used to cover, which was given or provided or gifted to cover the dome of the temple was done by Maharaja Ranjit Singh of Punjab. Remember that. Very interesting. Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Okay. And the, it was built and developed in 1780. By Maharani Ahilya by Holkar of Maratha Empire, Indore. Another very important fact. Now let's talk about Tarakeshwar Shiva Temple of West Bengal. Here, it is also known as Baba Taraknath Temple. And the Swayambhu Ling of Shiva is worshipped. Swayambhu means it originated by itself. It was not built. It originated by the powers of Shakti. And it was built by Raja Bharmal, 
in 18th century. Remember this, very important. The temple has intricate carvings and beautiful murals the, depicting the architecture of Bengal. Then another one is Kandariya Mahadev Temple, Khajuraho, which is a Nagara style temple. Okay, remember that. Nagara style temple. Okay, and it was built in 10th century Christ era, about 109 feet, 9 feet high and 60 feet wide. Also, the entrance of the temple is in the shape of an arch, like this. Okay, and the entrance of sanctum has elaborate floral carvings, flowers, and marble link is the symbol of Lord Shiva in the sanctum, and goddess Ganga and Yamuna are at the base of the pillar. Remember this preliminary fact. Okay, then we have Mahakaleshwar Temple of Ujjain, and it is also one of the twelve Jyoti links of in India and it's situated in Ujjain on the banks of river Shipra. Remember that again. Okay. Also, it is considered to be the holiest of Shiva temples in India. And unique feature is that the idol of Mahakaleshwar is Dakshinamurti that is facing the south. Very important. And in the period of Puranas, it was mentioned, Mahakaleshwar temple has been mentioned, interestingly. And in the, in the period of Puranas, Ujjain was known as Avanti, right? Avanti. Let's move forward. So, next is Lingaraj Shiva Temple of Orissa. It was built in the Kalinga style. And Kalinga architecture, it was built in 10th century by King Jajati Keshari. King Jajati Keshari. And it was completed in the 11th century by King Lala Tendu Keshari. Okay. King Lala Tendu Keshari. Right. Moving on. Also, it is the largest temple in Bhubaneswar. Remember, largest temple, Lingaraj temple. Moving on. Let's talk about other famous Shiv temples. Now, this temple was built during the Somvansi period in dual style that has four components naming, naming Vimana. Vimana is a structure containing the sanctum or the Garbhgriha. Then Jagmohan is the assembly hall. Remember all these meanings. Okay. Then Nata Mandira that is the festival hall or Bhoga Mandapam that is the hall of offerings whatever offerings have to be made. Then Somnath Shiv temple very important it is found in Gujarat. Temple is the first very first among the 12 Adi Jyotilings of India. Holiest one was Mahakalishwar. And temple is mentioned in Rig Veda, prelims fact, Rig Veda. It is an important Shiva temple in India. Of course, it's one of the Jyotilings. Why wouldn't it be? Then, reconstructed several times as foreign invaders plundered the temple. Uh, name one foreign invader that plundered it many times. Then, present temple reconstructed in the Chalukyan style. In 1951, remember that. Okay, so as it was plundered time and again, we had to rebuild and rebuild and rebuild it. The present style was from 1951. And notable structure is the Banas Thump or Arrow Pillar. Moving on. Now, next one is Trembakeshwar Temple of Maharashtra. That's an ancient Hindu temple and is located in Nashik district of Maharashtra. Okay, then it is also a Jyoti Ling, one of the Jyoti Lings. We have 12. And the origin of Godavari is near the Triambak city in Nashik. Remember this as well. Important preliminary fact. Also, it was constructed by third Peshwa, that was Balaji Bajirao. And the temple is made from entire black stone out of which element? Basalt. Again, point to be remembered for prelims. And then, Kailash temple of Maharashtra, it is one of the 34 temples of the Elora. And it's a splendid example of Rashtrakuta style of the Rashtrakuta dynasty. This is country's largest rock cut temple, megalith made of single rock. Megalith means a huge stone structure that could be a monument or a statue made from one rock. So that is why it is known as megalith. Also, next one is the Badami Cave Temple of Bangalore. This is a Shaivite cave and it, is, it has important carvings in the cave. And these are 
18 armed natraj striking 81 dance poses if it is asked in prelim you know where to think about the first badami cave temple is dedicated to lord shiva remember first badami cave dedicated to lord shiva then we have brihadeshwara shiva temple of tamil nadu and it is a typical dravidian style temple huge gopurams very large and intricate elaborate entry gates then it is situated on the banks of river kaveri and it is known in the inscription as dakshina meru meru means it's a mythological mountain highest top dakshina meru which temple is known as dakshina meru we know now that brihadeshwara shiva temple of tamil nadu is known as dakshina meru and chola king raja raja one he started the construction of the temple in the 19th year of his reign remember this 19th year of his reign and construction was completed around 10 10 ad okay remember that as well then other thing is it is unesco declared world heritage site in the year 1987 important fact to remember for prelims also vimana surmounting the sanctum sanctorum is made up of granite then we have vadda kunnathan temple of kerala this temple was made by parsuram very important sage parsuram we celebrated parsuram jayanti recently temple is classic example of the architectural style of kerala and it is of course a shaivite temple and the temple deity is known as vadakunnathan remember that temple houses stunning murals which are intricately carved wooden sculpture and exquisite woodwork very beautiful woodwork moving on it has monumental towers on all four sides you can see that and the major festivals are mahashivratri and thrissur puram if it is asked you know it's from kerala vadakunnathan temple and the towers are also known as kutambalam okay moving on to the next set that is the vidya shankara temple of shri shringeri that is in karnataka it was built in 1338 ad again from the perspective of prelims the unique monument built entirely of stone combining both hoysala that is chalukya and dravidian architectural style okay and the structure stands on a high plinth very raised plinth or platform now previous year question goes like match the list 1 with list 2 and select the correct answer using the codes given below this is from upsc 2009 famous temple and the state vidya shankara andhra pradesh rajarani temple karnataka kandariya mahadev madhya pradesh bhimeshwara temple odisha the correct answer will be first vidya shankara it belongs to karnataka rajarani temple belongs to odisha kandariya mahadev belongs to madhya pradesh and bhimeshwara temple belongs to andhra pradesh okay moving on we talk about virupaksha temple of hampi it was established in 7th century ad okay and also if we say that it is dedicated to lord shiva it wouldn't be wrong who is known as lokeshwara and by the queen of vikramaditya too it was built the temple is located on the south bank of river tungabhadra okay remember that rivers are important when it comes to temples okay moving on previous year question goes like where is the famous virupaksha temple located this is from upsc 2009 the correct answer would be of course hampi let's move on to our next thing which is how does a temple architecture work first we have kalasa kalasa is actually an inverted pot it is generally made of metal it can also be made of stone either metal or stone back in the days it used to be filled with grains okay in the times of drought it could be used okay then we have amlaka it is a round disc this is a round disc it can show it is symbolizing uh, a lotus okay it's like an inverted lotus so that the deity can sit on it it's like that okay then we have shikhara shikhara is the mount or the pyramid and this pyramid is is very intricately carved this symbolizes highest mountain top or meru highest mountain top or meru okay this can be in the form of stairs as well 
All right. Then we have garbhagriha. This is the womb. Garbhagriha means womb. That means the main deity sits here. Then we have mandapa. Wherever, if there is any sort of chanting to be going on, assembly to be going on, singing to be going on, it can be done in mandapa. This is for the devotees. Now we have style and temple architecture. Nagara style is very famous in northern India. Specifically, it ranges from the region from Himalayas to the Vindhyas. And this is a temple which has very high shikras. They can have gradual raise, rise in terms of uh, staircase they can go. And also you see that they have huge shikra with intricate carvings. Generally, the temple is built on a raised platform. Okay? And this is very famous with respect to northern India. And of course, if we talk about an important temple in Nagara style, it's Kandariya Mahadeo temple. Okay? Kandariya Mahadeo temple. We have told you that in the beginning only. Okay? Then we have Dravida style temple. Dravida style temple are basically formed in the southern region of India. Many important dynasties such as Cheras, Cholas, Pandyas, they built the Dravida style of temple. And what is their biggest significance? They have huge and very beautiful Gopurams or gateways. Huge Gopurams. Even bigger than the Shikhara. Huge Gopurams. Alright. Vesara style of temple. It comes from the Sanskrit word Vishra. Means a long area to walk. Many scholars believe that the current Vesara style of temple, it comes from Karnataka, okay? Karnataka is the birth style. And interestingly, it is a amalgamation or the mixture of both Nagara and Dravida. Very important temples of Hoysala and Somnathpura, these are built on the Vesara style, built in the Vesara style. So I hope I tried to cover many things and you understood. Thank you so much for watching. We will try to bring more episodes of each subject. Thank you.